What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Bears Den Trading Podcast for Sunday, March 27th. I am your host, Medman, with my mentor and co-host, Grizzly. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Marcus, looking up. You know, everything's looking good. So, been a great week overall. Um, awesome. And I, w- I would like to shout out some of the Team Bull members. Um, I've been seeing people really improving. Some great execution on their trades. Um, and honestly, a lot of the members are making more than I make now on my, you know, day trading. So that's amazing. I love seeing members being able to pay their bills, you know, uh, save up, just to create extra income and just make their life easier. You know, that's what it's all about. So. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. It's just like I, I see it every day in there and I'm like, you know, I know it's it's a matter of time before I I grasp all the concepts the right way to and, and and build up enough capital to like make it to that level but like seeing it is just so it's it's so convincing and it's so it makes you optimistic you know yeah like, makes, like i see people making money you know I sound like i'm advertising but i'm really not advertising i'm just i get pumped when i see you know it well makes i mean me like my sure. hard work's paying off you know what i mean like all the hard work i put in the learning and now I'm helping other people pay their bills. You know, I just, it gets me pumped. I don't know. Motivated. Exactly, man. Uh, I want to even step it up more. So that would pump me up more yeah. than just about anything. Like, especially like, I know uh, we've been hanging out for a minute now and I know where your heart is for sure. Like, dude, <laughs> it's just amazing to see, like, it's like your little bear cubs, like growing up. And- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I get a lot of the cub jokes. Um, having the the nickname grizzly but (laughs) how's your week trading you uh not not bad i uh i flubbed yesterday on good old lotto friday playing with my profits and stuff but um definitely some good signs for me as a trader uh education wise i definitely got a hold of some some higher percentage uh contracts this week on apple and on uh on new last week i believe so yeah, yeah apple I mean, has been a banger this week i mean it's been a really good stock to trade had nice movement um and what i like about apple you know you you know this um it's it's great for small accounts it's not mm-hmm. uh, obviously you know if you know me apple's not my favorite stock to day trade we've had a little had our issues in the past but <laughs> um it is small account friendly and if you have the patience and you do the technical analysis on the stock, you know, find some good levels. It works out, you know, because Apple is a, a steady growth mm-hmm. stock, you know. So, yeah. And it likes to when it goes up, it likes to keep that momentum. But when it goes down, you can almost to a T pick out where it's going to bounce every single time because it's so consistent and it's it's so strong, really, I think is what it is, too. Um, there's one thing I wanted to bring up. Because I've been hearing a lot of news lately about energy and all that stuff and how we're, we're as a, you know, global economy getting away from depending on Russia for oil and stuff like that. So my thought as a, as an investor, as a trader is like, where do we go then? Where, where's that money going to land? And in my mind, with the leaps and bounds we've been making in the technology, it's definitely going to start landing in solar pretty heavy. If I had to guess, um, cause nuclear takes so much time and hydro is a, is kind of a rarity. So like it kind of just leaves solar as that, that leading technology that's, that's accessible right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have a point. I don't really, you know, I, I don't know enough about it to speak on it, but I can see where you're coming from. It makes sense from, a, you know, just from being a spectator. So. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. And I mean, I know I think that that's one thing that we want to be paying attention to is like, where is that? Because that that money's got to land somewhere sometime. So just be on the lookout because that's a big, big chunk in my opinion. But speaking of big chunks, how'd this last week go, man? What what, what did you take and how did you manage to have yet another best week? <laughs> um, I don't, you know, the market was just strong this week. You know, we come, we bounce, had a nice bounce up. Um <laughs> For those of you that follow me on my socials, I, I discussed this, but you know we've had a lot of small account trades come through this week. Um, 
like the Twitter, for instance, you know, which I still love for Twitter. It's, I still like it above this 39, 40 area for calls. It still looks good. Um, but uh, we traded Apple, Twitter, Riot. Riot was a uh, nice gainer. We traded that a couple of days at Team Bull. Um, really nice profits off that. And you could have traded this with any account size, nearly. Very cheap to trade using options. Um, I would say the video was one of my biggest trades I made this week, if I remember right. Um, obviously, I don't remember every trade because, you know, a lot of trades weekly. Um, and it's over <laughs> this year, you know, so they run in together. Uh, but um, for sure, it's all a blur. Yeah. <laughs> well, people... Now, there was a lot of fear in this market, so we had a nice sell-off, all the Russian news, this and that. But, um, you know, if you're new to trading and you're listening to this, I just want to say, as day traders, we can make money in any market conditions. We make money going up in bull markets, down in bear markets, even trading sideways. There's plenty of money to be made daily. What's important is that you put education first, plenty of time to trade in the future. Um do this right. Surround yourself with a good community that's going to push you to become the best trader possible. Um, that's why, you know, I don't own Team Bull. I'm just, a, I'm an admin at Team Bull, but I cannot stress the importance of having a good community like Team Bull around you to help you on your trading journey, you know? And For I will sure. say this before I turn it back over to Medman. In my opinion, <laughs> options trading is the way to build small accounts. Um, you don't need near the, uh, you know, you don't need near the capital you do when you're trading shares to get the same return. So just keep that in mind. Options are really worth learning if you're trying to build your account or if you just, you know, I have a big account now and I still prefer to trade options. I have been trading some equity. Brandon, another really good trader at Team Bull, one of the admins, he still prefers to trade options. You know, he has a big account. So it's just your preference. But if you're growing your account, you definitely need to look into options. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, like, obviously, that's uh, is leverage, you know, these you're, you're dealing with some exponential numbers when you're playing with options and stuff like that. So there is more risk, obviously. But, you know, I mean, follow, follow those who know how to manage risk. And that won't be the issue that you might think it will um, adversely to trading stocks. It's not, you know, there are there are ways to to deal with it for sure for sure risk management join our classes and learn risk management um let's see here we do actually have some a couple of earnings reports this week it's not uh, nothing crazy or anything but there is a uh, one team bowl favorite uh on tuesday for sure um but first well, actually, you know what? We got two team ball favorites sitting here. I mean, this one on Monday, we've got Lucid, which we've traded a few, quite a few times before, and it has ripped for us quite a few times before, I think. Um, and then also there's MU on Tuesday. And then I put Sundial on there just because... Um, All the news going around. Because of the news, yeah. Uh, and it's it's pretty convenient that it's on... Tuesday after market, which is probably when all those decisions are going to be made, you know, like it's, it's probably around the time we'll know uh, whether the house is, is voted on this uh, successfully or not. So that could be a thing. Could be interesting to watch. Could Again, we never recommend trading earnings. Uh, Cause yeah. <laughs> and at all, you're going to lose all your money. It's like when I, I look at trading earnings, like playing the lottery. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know the, you know, the exact uh, percentage, but I'm sure the chances of you winning are very low. So just keep that in mind. That being said, for my fellow DGNs, um, just be sure, <laughs> be sure to, if you, if you're like me, you only play with, let me rephrase that. In my trading plan, if I, if I trade earning, you know, if I play earning lottos, I only use my profits from that day that I made day trading. Um, and it's worked out for me, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be 100% transparent. 
I always lose earning a lot of, I don't know if I've ever won. I think I've, I've won like one. I bought a cause on. I think it was like Apple, I believe. I believe it was Apple. I made a little bit of money. No, maybe it was Microsoft. I made some money off of, um, but it wasn't much. Yeah, I really got my butt chewed on this week. On on Friday, Lotto's no bueno. But it no do bueno. happen. It does happen. So like <laughs> uh, it is fun though, you know? Like it does make it interesting. Um but you know, when you trade a zero day to expiration contracts, it's this mainly for scalping because if you get caught holding them too long, your your premium's gone because of that uh, you know time decay yeah. got you yeah that's why i say like literally they they chewed on me that <laughs> theta that theta came for me like pac-man you know i know some people that have a good luck out of like doing qqq same day expiration um i can see that yeah um but they're more experienced options traders and they're very successful so if they lose they don't, they're not really worried about it but you know mm-hmm. Um, actually, I was talking one yesterday. It was a shelf survivor. Actually, um, we was talking, hey, hey. and he uh, he took some QQQ zero DT uh, options, and uh, he did really well. Hmm. Um, he made a I forget the percentage. I know I believe it was over fifty percent. Actually, Ooh, nice. Um, yeah, yeah. And if it was shipped, I mean, he'd probably. Got in pretty deep there, right? Like <laughs> it's on Taylor. It's on Taylor. <laughs> um he's very good with his risk management though. I'm sure it was it's just well thought out and um fun. brilliant <laughs> brilliant trader, generous, generous gentleman. Uh it was his birthday as well yesterday. So happy birthday if you're listening, ship. Yeah, happy birthday, ship. You should come back on the show. We miss you. Um, Let me have a chat. Oh, I was going to ask the audience if anyone had been practicing or reading up on selling cover calls or cash secured puts since, uh, was it last podcast we discussed them? Or I uh, Yeah, I believe so. I, I've made over, I think I made over $200 last week off of them. And I, I'm, I should make over 200 this week. I've just been, you know, learning them as I go. I, I plan on upping my position in them. Once I have complete understanding, um, but so far so good. I have no complaints. It's been, you know, I mean, two hundred dollars off of a test, like yeah, I, I mean, it. not bad. <laughs> not I, bad I've at been all. Them, uh, you know, I've been doing it on a uh, hut H U T. Yeah, um, the crypto, and um, I sold some covered calls yesterday for um, Friday's ex- this coming Friday's expiration. And I sold them for like uh, $30 a piece, I believe, mm-hmm. which is not bad, you know, considering the stock is what, yeah. what was it, like 500, five minutes, sorry, $5 and something, right? Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, I've got how much? 500. Um, I'm trying to think of my average price. It's like $5, close to $5. Um, so I've got 500 in that and mm-hmm. I'm getting um, a 30%. Thirty dollar return weekly off that five hundred. So you know, so far so good. I'm very happy with the result. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like the scalability of that is insane. You know, just to make that weekly off of just sitting there holding something. Like, I mean, yeah. Worst case scenario, you have to sell all your shares at that strike that strike price if it expires. Yeah. You know, if it expires in the money, but. You know, you've already planned for that. You're already, even if you do have to sell them, you're making money off the shares. Yeah. And you're keeping the premium. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like it's, and if like, I oh, do darn, have to, I have to sell them. Yeah. And now if I do have to sell them, you know, I'll just, I'll just sell cash secured puts until I buy my shares back and start the cycle all over again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'd be collecting premium off the cash secured put. Um, I haven't started yet, but I probably in the next week or two will will start doing the same thing with um, with something. Maybe I might start with CEI as a test, just because that's like as about as minuscule as I can get on it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but even even at that, you know, 
even CEI, you can really you can really start something um, for your portfolio there. Yeah, CEI. Yeah, yeah, I've been selling. I've been selling some on CEI as well. Um, nice. It's about if you sell like a, you know a week out, seven, eight days out, you can expect to collect between seven to eight dollars premium on the calls. Um, and that's like uh, that's that stock's like sixty eight cents a share. I think last time 70, I looked seventy something cents this week. Uh, yeah. So like to get a hundred shares of that, you know. Yeah, you'd be selling the one dollar call. So nice. I mean, I think it was six. I can't remember if it was six. Six to nine dollars. Um, just depends how high the IV is. Um, and what I really like to do, I like to catch it when we have a nice run up during the day when it's closer to that strike price. That way the contracts are more expensive, right? Mm-hmm. And when I sell them, I collect more of a premium. Um, and I have been doing a lot of research on this. Um, people, people actually go and search stocks that have high implied volatility. Like they, you know, there's, there's like a search you can do. You can, you know, search options, and they'll do that. They'll sell, you know, cash secure puts on that because they're collecting that high premium due to high IV. You know, because when the implied volatility is up on a call option, they're more expensive. Take Lucid for instance. I'm not telling anybody to do this. This is not advice. This is just facts. Um, Lucid, you know, it got earnings this week. I haven't looked at the calls or anything, but mm-hmm. I would say they have high IV, making them overpriced. Um, you know, some people look at that like opportunity, like, hey, I can go sell this call and make this much money. You know, there's more risk involved, obviously, because it's earnings and it could make a big move either way. Definitely more premium in the, op- you know, more money to be made off premiums during that time. Um, that being said, I don't recommend trading or selling covered calls or cash secure puts during on the stock if they have dividends that week. Yeah. Even earnings. I know I just said earnings, but still it just adds to your risk. Um or like a uh, split or anything. I don't know how that would work. I've never dealt with that, but I'd imagine you don't want to mess with a stock that has a split. It's not fun. Uh, I think, oh, it was when, um, it was when actually, I think it was a merge that I, I had calls and, uh, and like it was, that was Tilray. Uh, but when they were merging with another company and I ended up with, instead of a call for a hundred shares, I ended up with a call for 80 and I was really weirded out by it and stuff. And I made all the math really weird and everything was, it was so bad. It was strange. It was Robin Hood too, so it was probably made even stranger by that. Yeah, probably. Oh, the March mentorship that started and it's going well. Um, it filled up nicely, and I, I will. I'm gonna say this while I'm thinking about it. I've had I don't know maybe ten DMs asking me when the next one is gonna be. You'll be able to sign up for it probably mid April, um, and the classes will start in May at some point, probably mid May. Um, just for those that are looking forward to it. And another question I've been getting about it. Yes, it is a tax write-off. You can write it off on your taxes. Nice tax cut. Um, just something to keep in mind. Yes, definitely. Any uh, Anything that is education for like self, self-betterment self and all that stuff, definitely a tax write-off. Yes. We need everything possible for tax write-offs. Um, oh, yeah. Also... Um, your losses, I believe, uh, your losses are right off up to thirty five hundred a year, something like that. Oh, well, I'm the worst with taxes. That's why I have accountant. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, definitely don't take my word for it. Go look that out. But I'm pretty pretty sure, like you know, at least you can go Google it off of that. But I'm pretty sure you can get thir- up to thirty five hundred off of your uh, off your losses as well. So that's market tuition right there, bud. <laughs> yep. All right. So, um, yeah. So. Earnings Monday Lucid Tuesday MU and Sundial, which is a pretty pretty successful uh, little cannabis company as well. Um, optimistic about potential new market, new legal market there. Um, so how do we feel about next week? Okay, now for those of you that follow my TikTok or Instagram, you know I put out a video on this, but. 
on the SPX daily chart here, we had what looked to be a bull flag forming. We had a nice move up last week. Um, I feel like once we get above the 4,600 area on SPX, we will head back toward all-time highs. I don't know how long that'll take. I don't know when it'll happen, but when it does happen, I think we'll have a nice steady climb back up to all-time highs and continue to make the all-time highs. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate from people that maybe sold their long-term for a loss or that, you know, wasn't investing in this dip. I don't mean no disrespect. Huh. Um, I don't mean but, no dis- disrespect, but you should have been listening to us in the first place. No, I can. I just, I just tell people what I do. If they listen, you know, <laughs> up to them. It could have. I'm not saying it's going back to all time highs right now. It could take it. You know, it could trade in range. You know, this kind of trade back and forth, but still, plenty of money to be made from it. Um, mm-hmm. Especially when we, so you know, when we respect these big support and resistance levels. For those in team pool, you know how we do on them, you know, really make some money. Um, but yeah, let's see what it looks like once we get above 4600 uh, on SPX. I think um, everyone will be very happy, especially the ones that happen to continue investing in the dip. I think everyone will be happy with their average. Mm. So, doing the uh, doing this watch list live, man, it's really. People are having a blast. I'm having a blast, like being out there and, and just watching it shape up and everything. And everybody's yeah. questions getting answered and stuff. It's it's really a good time, actually. Yeah, I really like it. Um, what I like about it, it gives everyone a chance to just come and bring their own stock. They want me to check out, you know, just kind of interact, develop our own weekly watch list. You know, the top setup we like. It's just a good learning uh, process. It's just it's fun, really. Um, for those of you that like to watch it, you can just, it's on my YouTube, same place the podcast is now. Um, we do this on Sundays. I mean, I'm going to set a strict time for this once I see what's, you know, what works best for everyone. The, I guess the average time that works best for everyone. Um, oh, yeah. Ooh, I would say this. Didn't mean to cut you off, man. man no, you're good. You're good. I've been doing the morning watch list live on Instagram mm-hmm. every morning. So I've been giving you my day trading watch list as well. So you need to check this out. I'm trying to pr- provide the most value possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're not in Team Bull, you definitely need to come join us in there. Because after I leave Instagram Live, I head over to Team Bull Discord. And that's where I call my trades out uh, on voice. So, yeah. It's just so much more so much more confidence. Um, trade. It's like going from trading in a dark little cellar hovel on your own to to trading with like a room full of people who know what they're talking about it's pretty it's pretty polar opposite from from just feeling completely alone like and if you think you're you th- if you think that you're like i'm a loner i love being a loner in the market and stuff like that trust me just check it out because you're gonna learn something you're, you're gonna learn something and it's gonna change the way you trade by a lot of percentage points like <laughs> yeah i mean it is, a, it is the place to be man legit i would agree but i'm really i'm really looking forward to this next week a little more than usual uh which i always look forward to trading you know i love it but mm-hmm. you know i like where we're at in this market i would love to see a continuation um keep in mind it's not gonna make me biased either way i'm still gonna trade my levels um, that's just how I day trade, but you know, I'm not gonna say I don't. I'm not loving my long term right now. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. my average is looking good. Um, not that I plan on selling it in t- any time soon. It just adds to your confidence. You know, no one wants to see their stuff red all the time. Um, yeah. As Jay Dunn always says, he pr- that's why he prefers day trading because you know when you're swing trading. If, for those of you not familiar with swing trading, it's a you know it's like a medium, uh, like the mid size length trade you know last overnight to a month period right you know jay done he said i don't like that because you know when you get in a swing trade you gotta have a a, a looser stop loss than you would yeah. when you're day trading so keep in mind i keep mine roughly 50 percent you know different situations call for different stop losses but roughly 50 percent uh because you, you have to give it room to move because the market's going to go up and down. It don't continuously go up 
but it don't continuously go down. It's going to mm-hmm. chop around. So, um, anyways, I don't yeah, know get off on that. But uh, <laughs> you know, some people just cannot handle seeing red. Yeah, no, seeing all that, I mean, it is daunting, like, seeing all that red all the time. Like, if you're a swing trader, yeah. you you end up seeing it for, for a decent part of the trade, sometimes up till the very, very end, even, you know, it's just like, oh, man, <laughs> is it gonna, is it gonna do it? Is it gonna? That's why, I mean, I like the instant gratification of scalping, for sure, um, which is definitely why I'm, I'm, like, trying so hard to learn to to do the, the scalping, the the way you do but you're so damn fast all right well um i think that's all we've got for this week to be honest it's pretty solid uh pretty succinct a little podcast episode we've got ourselves this week uh nothing wrong with that so i think next week we're gonna have a another special guest on that'll be pretty cool yeah it's gonna be a definitely don't want to miss the next one it's gonna be a little little special that's awesome keep your eyes out for that next possible mentorship you know news about that we'll definitely let you all know if uh if there's some more news about that coming up tune in in just a bit for grizzly to go live and make that weekly watch list for you um on youtube live and don't forget during the week he's going live just before the market opens just before he jumps into team bowl to uh on instagram on instagram to take a little look at uh that daily watch list as well awesome I guess I'll see you all hopefully in Team Bull. Oh yeah, and also yeah, if you all wanna wanna join Team Bull, little little two day trial, a little bit of a discount. Check out Grizzly's website, grizzlytrades.com. There's uh, definitely a link on there for that. Definitely a link for some other cool stuff too. So check that out. And remember that this podcast is not financial advice, but education. So please take notes and practice good risk management. That was my telephone voice. What? <laughs> What'd you say? I said that was my telephone voice. <laughs> <laughs> my robo, robo caller voice. All right.